which is tiny. That's what we were looking for, too. Holy cow. This is unreasonably cute. Hey there, explorers. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, and today we are herping the sandhills on the hunt for the cutest snake in North America, the southern hognose snake. Let's see if we can find one. Josh, what are we gonna find today? Hopefully a king. I think we're gonna get a loggerhead musk turtle and nothing else. More scorpions. Sam, that's a good prediction. <laughs> um, Scarlet King. Fortunately, the Hogtober luck was with us. And after only a few hours of herping, we had our first encounter with our target species. Okay, what we've got here is an adult cymus, an adult cellar and hognose snake. Now, as we know, hognose snakes do get their name from the upturned end of their nose. They have some highly killed scales there. The reason they have those is because these are actually a burrowing species. So they have a highly fossorial lifestyle, extremely cryptic snakes, which makes them very difficult to study. And it means that we don't have a ton of information available about their populations, whether or not they're going up or down. And that's why it's been so challenging to get the species listed at the federal level. But definitely the more that we fragment and decrease the amount of this very specific kind of sandy soil habitat they depend on, the worse our beautiful southern hognose snakes are going to fare. Adult southern hognose snakes will only get about 12 to 24 inches long at absolute maximum size. And while it's sitting in this leaf litter, you can see that that pattern is extremely cryptic. It looks just like the leaf litter. It's breaking up its outline. It's really cool to see an adult though. That is awesome. It's really beautiful too. It has some orange. It's just a very unique snake in an irreplaceable part of our natural landscapes. That is ridiculously cool. As amazing as it was to encounter an adult southern hognose snake in the wild, I still wasn't fully sold on their cuteness. And then we found a baby. It's tiny. That's what we were looking for too. Holy cow. It's unreasonably cute. <laughs> it's so weird looking. Josh spotted this. I don't know how. Josh, what's your initial reaction? Was it a stick? Okay, what is your initial impression of the snake? I, I don't understand how he saw such a small snake. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, it's absurd. This is how big it is. <laughs> That's wild. Oh, man. Sam, Esme, what do you guys think about the snake? That's awesome. It's really cool. It is really cool. Nathan, what's your professional opinion? They're a lot smaller than I thought they would be. <laughs> it's really tiny. You can see it's probably about, I don't know, like five inches long and potentially the cutest snake I can imagine seeing. Now, southern hognose snakes and eastern hognose snakes are closely related. They are the only two species of hognose snakes that exist in the southeastern U.S. And both of these guys are rear fanged toad specialists, toad and frog specialists. So you can't see them when his mouth is closed, but if you were to open up wide, you would see two teeny little fangs kind of in the back of his head. And those two fangs secrete a mild neurotoxic venom and they pop toads when they inflate so they can swallow them effectively. Southern hognose snakes also exhibit a unique anti-predatory behavioral response called death feigning, where basically they roll over, curl up in a ball, and play possum. And this is a behavior that is only shared with their close cousin, the eastern hognose snake. Now, unlike their cousins, the eastern hognose snake, southern hognose snakes are extremely small. And that means they're also eating far smaller amphibians. So typically, southern hognose snakes are gonna feed on things like ornate chorus frogs or oak toads out here in these sand hills habitats where they live. Because southern hognose snakes are actually a habitat specialist. You can only find them in the sandy soil areas, dunes, longleaf pine woodlands. Now, unfortunately, because our southern hognose snakes are habitat specialists, they are not doing so hot in terms of overall population numbers. In fact, these are a species of special concern in many states, even though they don't have federal listing status. It would be a disaster if we lost a species like the southern hognose snake because there really is not anything else quite like them ecologically. They're super unique. They have these adaptations that allow them to consume species of amphibian like toads that most other reptiles would die if they ate. And since they're only found in this unique habitat type, it's critically important that we make sure we are conserving our sandy soil habitats for southern hognose snakes and other sandhills specialists. If you're interested in learning more about the conservation of the southern hognose snake, I highly recommend checking out the Project Simus page. It's a nonprofit organization dedicated to the conservation of this species and the sandhills ecoregion. This has been an absolutely amazing encounter. Such a cute snake. It's a real treat to see one in the wild. He's out of frame. <laughs> This has been a truly remarkable animal encounter, something I did not think I was gonna have for a very long time. Such a legendary snake, and one of the cutest snakes out there for sure. Remember to go check out the Project Simus page if you're interested in learning more about the conservation of this amazing species, and I'll see you on our next adventure. What an amazing snake. 
If you enjoyed learning about the southern hognose snake, I think you'd also like this video about the eastern hognose snake. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.